Okay, in this short little gesture, I'm going to take and dealing with the, the sort of a common problem that people have uh, is going from the gesture to taking and then actually taking it the next sort of a step farther. So here I'm just thinking of a, uh, I'm drawing from imagination here. And just the figure uh, maybe twisting a little bit. And so this would be the first sort of step in the drawing. So the second step is to taking and this is where the key comes for helping you to take and, and going anywhere is you have to be able to see the very, very simple volumes in the drawing. In other words, here is just, I'm just creating a pretty extreme uh, stretching type of uh, situation here, the twisting. But uh, notice what I'm doing is I'm reducing this down to very, very simple volumes as I'm going through. It's nothing complicated. And in fact, at this point in the drawing, uh, it's, it's really not uh, any anatomy involved. It's just, it could really essentially be simple cylinders. Uh, here, the only part of anatomy I would be taking in, getting involved here would be taking and adding, for instance, the volume of the scapula and thinking of the arm going back in, uh, the other arm going. Notice it all. Right away, we're taking and uh, getting a fairly clear idea of what's going on. Now, the next step in the, from here, and what if we start to take and build build the form a little bit farther, and let's go a little bit more uh, in detail here, a little closer, we can see what I'm taking and talking about. I'm, I'm just going to spend a few minutes on this on this pose now. So from here. I would start to take and say, well, okay, here I start to think corner of the pelvis, and back on the other side. Uh, the figure that we're taking in here is really, now I'm going over the surface, I'm thinking of the spine, uh, where the rib cage is a little bit more, so I'm adding anatomy, we're taking and feeling the stretching of the rib cage is coming through, we're pulling, so we're really now focusing on the how that what the dynamics of the figure are and where we start to really feel and feeling how what would happen the compression coming over this is the the equivalent to the um, a potato sack thing that I deal with all the time now we're we feeling wow here's a potato sack and we're twisting we're bringing this potato sack to life well what you're doing is you're talking about here how the physical quality of the things relate one to another, the stretching and the compression. And so this is where we go beyond, beyond what you actually probably would see. And here we would take, and I'm really pulling the stretch. You feel the forms coming out from behind. I'm focusing on the overlapping, but getting past this stage in the drawing where we actually start to take and make the drawing come more, not alive, but let's just say more realistic, where we start to deal with the tone. And at this point, what we focus on is the modeling tone. The modeling tone is nothing more than the idea that what's facing you is in light, what recedes goes into the tone. As you push the tone behind over the surface as it goes back in. That is essentially the modeling tone. And if this is attached to, say, another form behind, well, what's facing us here was also is in light. If what's facing us back there is in light. So now you can see what we're getting is how one form is sort of fitting into another. But in the case of this potato sack up here, you would be feeling the form going down, we could feel the forms going back, we could feel where the underside, maybe even here we went through, we could feel the side. So in other words, you can render anything. So in taking and focusing on this, uh, say, little leg here, I would be saying that, okay, the tone 
on the top of the lake it's going back on the side is going back as we work back into the figure then these forms would be you would have just a simple modeling tone going over the surface pushing the sides back coming down uh, the pelvis back here now the part that's facing us here would be fairly in light you'd just be picking up and going over the surface I'd be pushing tones back and then progressively as you get more realistic in the drawing you take and start to add information and that's where you, where your anatomy comes into play you start to add you start to add more information so the idea is that you're building now the approach that I'm just going through here is really uh, the essentials of being able to draw from imagination and drawing without a model. You build, you construct uh, things. Now we could even carry this a little bit farther. I'm going to ghost uh, these drawings down here a little bit that we had going so we can see reducing the gesture drawing, uh, reducing the construction drawing, and now reducing the art I've just done. Okay, now I'm going to go back over these uh, now with a little bit more care here. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush here to begin with. So now focusing, I'm gonna, again, I'm just digging, dealing with a part here now. So we can take and as I start to work with this, then I can start to say, well, okay, now with a little bit more care. Coming through, I can think of where these forms are building in. But essentially, I'm doing this all using the modeling tone now. Here, I'd be taking in the back, I'd be saying, well, okay, this is the, the gluteus medius. And we start coming down to where the trochanter would be. We think of where the uh, tensor is coming around. Feel. See, now I'm starting to focus on overlapping forms. It's pressure underneath. We start coming over. But again, at the same time, now I'm just carrying the idea a little bit farther. And just, in other words, a little bit farther in terms of adding more knowledge of the form. So if I come and say, let's go back to the kneecap here. Okay, we can feel forms going behind. So if I start to render this, then I would be taking saying, well, okay, we're going over, we're going around the corner, coming through. Now, now though I'm drawing this on the computer, I, the same steps, same procedure, I go through drawing on paper. And if you've looked at any of my videos, uh, you see that there's really no difference. Uh, whether it's uh, going, looking at the material from the Vilpu store or the New Masters Academy, you'll find that long pose, short pose are all pretty much developed the same, same basic procedure. In fact, uh, whether I'm drawing on a computer, paper, draw precisely the same way. And so these are the essentials of what some people call the Vilpu way, but it's not my way. It's uh, it's very just very very traditional drawing, and by traditional also I mean notice that the main emphasis here was on the gesture, and then coming in and constructing, and then as you take and construct, you add information. Uh, as you're building the form and we take each step you take and add information the main here is that obviously I have not uh, copying because since I'm drawing from imagination uh, and, and the key even when I'm drawing from a model we never copy the model we analyze the model and the point being then is that we use our knowledge. We don't copy contours. 
we take and create contours. So the further or the more time I spend on it, I can take this down to an absolute uh, realistic image. So let's just quickly look uh, look through the different steps that we've gone through. Uh, there's where we began. Simple gesture. Then we took an added to that, building it up, and start carrying it farther. That's it. And that's 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 really the basic basic steps that we go through in the drawing, whether you're dealing with cartooning or a realistic figure or comic books.